Good morning, everyone. Good morning, May. Please have your attention. I'm Steve Moster, Director of Enrollment Management and your host for this morning's celebration. Welcome to a glorious day. We are blessed that the clouds are out. We're lucky in this beautiful day. I'm pleased to welcome you to Penn State Abington. Our commencement ceremony will begin momentarily. Out of respect for our graduating students, please refrain from unnecessary conversation and movement during the ceremony. That way all families can celebrate and see their student um, receive their diploma and celebrate with them by seeing them walk over the stage. Please note that only authorized photographers are allowed in this front area. If you'd like to take pictures of your graduates, we will guide you to the side so that you can take them. I will tell you that the graduates are coming up on um, your left, and they'll be coming down on your right. But there will be no, please don't have anyone in the center aisle and no photography from the center aisle. Afterwards, you're welcome to come back to the stage. The shrine is up by the reception. And there also is a place inside the Student Union where we've set up backdrops if you want to take pictures. So there are plenty of opportunities for pictures. Please let the ceremony process. And please come forward. If you're going to take move up for the pictures, please do that only during the time when you're graduate. You'll see your graduates stand, and that's when you're going to want to move forward. We do ask after the ceremony, a lot of people in the past have tried to move their cars to get up into the um, reception area. There is no parking up there. If you need transportation, we will have plenty of shuttles here available to take you up, or you can gradually walk up through the campus um, to the reception. So please either walk or take the shuttle. Please leave your cars in place. After the reception, the shuttles will be available if you'd like transportation back to your parking lot. At this time, if we could clear all aisles and get ready for the processional, I want to say congratulations in advance of the ceremony to all of the family and friends of these graduates. They've worked hard. I was in the gym with them, and they are very excited that you're here, and congratulations to all of you. I hope you enjoy this morning's ceremony, and we will um, convene afterwards at the reception on the Sutherland Plaza. So please stand in preparation for the recessional, and you'll want to face toward the back, and remain standing after everyone comes forward for the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you.
Abington, please remain standing for the national anthem performed by members of the Penn State Abington choirs. Thank you to the African drumming troupe, Kulu Mele, and to the choirs for opening our ceremony with such steering renditions. I would like to introduce the people sharing the stage with me this morning. Please sta uh, stay standing <laughs> as I call your name. Farah Jimenez, President and Chief Executive Officer. You may sit down now. <laughs> Farah Jimenez, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Philadelphia Education Fund and our keynote speaker. Alvin Clements, Trustee Emeritus of the Penn State Board of Trustees and Board Member of the Penn State Smeal College of Business Board of Visitors. Melissa Quintana, President, the Penn State Abington Alumni Society Board. Dr. Andrew August, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Dr. Matthew Fury, Chair of the Abington College Faculty Senate. Dr. Samir Usomji, Associate Dean for Policy, Planning, and Assessment. Dr. Safar Hatahed, Division Head for Science and Engineering. Dr. Roy Robson, Division Head for Arts and Humanities. Dr. Francis Sessa, Interim Division Head for Social Sciences. And Gina D'Amato Kaufman, Director, Student Affairs. Now, please welcome Mr. Alvin Clemens for our opening remarks. You may be seated. One of the most significant events in the, in the life of college students is the college graduation. But it brings, it brings a mixture of joy and sadness. Joy for reaching your goals and sadness for saying goodbye to a lot of good friends that became part of your life. College also provides some of the most memorable and influential moments in life. Individually, your experiences are unique. But together, you share a common bond as class of 2018. On behalf of the Penn State Board of Trustees, I wish you the best, whatever paths and opportunities you may follow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. Graduating seniors, faculty, staff, students, and honored guests, Welcome to our spring 2018 commencement. Although this is a day to celebrate your accomplishments, I am sure that many have supported you along the way. Let us begin 
by thanking them. Would the class of 2018 please stand, turn and face our audience, and join me in recognizing those who provided support and encouragement. Now please turn back and thank our fantastic faculty and staff who are celebrating your success. Thank you. You may be seated. Before we continue, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of one of our graduates, Everado Nevers, who was expected to receive his Bachelor of Arts degree in Integrative Arts today. We at Penn State Abington College are saddened by the loss of a graduate who was full of promise. Would members of Everado's family who have joined us today please rise? We would like to acknowledge your presence. I have asked Elvia and Eneida Nevers to please come to the stage. Elvia and Eneida are Everardo's sisters. They're here to accept the degree on his, on his behalf. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the president of the university and the board of trustees, I present the degree of Bachelor, Bachelor of Arts in Integrative Arts from the Abington College for Everado Nevers. I invite the audience to stand as William Cromar, Assistant Teaching Professor of Art and mentor to Everado presents a bouquet of flowers and escorts Elvia and Eneida from the stage. Thank you. We offer the family and friends our deep condolences and heartfelt remembrance of his achievement. Thank you. You may be seated. Dear class of 2018, I would like to share with you an experience I had several weeks ago on a chilly but sunny Sunday in March. During a visit to the nation's capital, I strolled to the National Portrait Gallery. I had not visited before. I'm glad I did. I admit that on that Sunday, despite the sunshine, I was a bit gloomy, troubled by the incessant bickering and fragmentation and polarization and incivility across our nation. A low intensity violence, sometimes high intensity violence, afflicted upon all of us and which all too often we inflict on one another. So I skipped part of the conference I was attending this is in confidence, do not tell my boss. <laughs> and I walked several blocks to the museum, up the cement stairs, through heavy doors. I turned right to the first room, and I was greeted by the following quote. These are times that try men's souls. Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1776. The National Portrait Gallery is a who's who of American history, a secular pantheon of heroes, and yes, some villains, and everything in between, depending on who, how, and when one judges. But at the end, human all. Who decides? Who curates? Who belongs and who doesn't belong in the nation's portraiture? 
in our national community. On that Sunday, I found a testament of the greatness of America, a greatness based on inclusion, not exclusion. I encountered old, familiar faces. Yes, George Washington, of course, crossing the Potomac, and recent ones, Barack and Michelle Obama. Others not familiar, the unexpected characters of our colorful, textured, multi-dimensional national collage with its frayed edges, clashing patterns, more cubist quilt that fine woven blanket. Faces, bodies, stories from across time and space covering the wondrous spectrum of our real American greatness, all under one graceful roof. Generals and Jerry Seinfeld, scientists, Scientologists, singers, champions and Charles Chaplin, slaves and sons and daughters of slaves and slave owners, actors like Ira Aldridge, a black man renowned for his Shakespearean, Shakespearean roles in the 1820s and 1830s. Activists like Susan B. Anthony, who led the movement to get women the right to vote, and Cesar Chavez, who organized migrant workers so they too would earn decent wages. Civil rights marcher, marchers and men donning white sheets marching by. The, evangel the evangelist Billy Graham not too far from George Lyle, an early founder of the independent black churches, who shared a wall with one of the first Muslims in the colonies, and close by, Mary Baker Eddy. Daredevils, divas, and dancers, don't miss the alliteration here, entrepreneurs, engineers, and entertainers, philosopher, physicist, and physicians, real life characters, some whom at, during their times had been scorned. The intellectual Gertrude Stein, Stein without her beloved Alice B. Toklas. But the beat poet, Allen Ginsberg, with his beloved Peter Orlovsky, within the same frame. And in the same room, John Wayne and Sylvester Stallone. Many like me, who were not born here, but called this nation home. Helena Rubinstein, the cosmetics tycoon, born in Poland. Susie Wong, actress, producer, AIDS activist, born in Hong Kong. The Puerto Rican leader, Luis Munoz Marin. The Cuban American artist, Ana Mendieta, who would lay her body on the ground to connect to Mother Earth but died on the cement surface of a New York City street. All coexisting in harmony, in dignity, in one shared space, in the reciprocal recognition that each made a mark on our nation, each embodying his or her personal story while contributing to narrate with multiple voices our collective story. I admit that I was as fascinated by what was contained within the frames as what laid outside them, the spaces in between the portraits. The distance, the closeness, the blank in-betweenness, that which both separates and brings us all together in the National Gallery. That backdrop is the space that we share, our basic American values. That opportunity should be available to all. That talent and merit come in all sizes and shapes and colors and genders. That hard work should pay off. That we all have the right to express our humanity in ways that are authentic to each. That we all have the right to advocate for our passion 
and contribute to the greater good. And that we all should be respected and afforded our rights. On that Sunday, as I approached the portraits on the walls, getting close to them as if they were old friends, I looked into their eyes to understand what stories their faces told, reading the text that accompanied each picture. I realized that we are all part of a living national gallery, that we share one space in time, and that Abington is part of our shared story and will always be. May what you learned here carry you forth to contribute in small and big ways to making our national story better. Make your mark. So today, when I look at you, class of 2018, I see your faces. I welcome your stories from near and far, inspiring all. I envision the future of our nation's gallery. Do not forget that despite the differences, our separate frames, despite the space in between us, we share a common humanity and a core of national values that will serve us well if embraced. The greatness of America is the promise of those ideals. The promise that their pursuit will redeem us all, even during times that try our souls. And Abington, class of 2018, as you leave, I bid you farewell with a word from my former homeland, a word resonant with our African roots and our unconquerable tropical joy. A blessing for good fortune as you go your way. Ache. Ache, class of 2018. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Farah Jimenez, the president and chief executive officer of the Philadelphia Education Fund. Farah is a champion of high quality public education and at the forefront of the effort to ensure young people in Philadelphia have access to an education that prepares them to succeed in college. The Philadelphia Education Fund is the largest college access program in Philadelphia and operates, in the largest, operates the largest non university based scholarship program in the city. Farah is a committed public servant, having served in federal, state, and local leadership roles, including as a gubernatorial appointee to the School Reform Commission, tasked with oversight of the School District of Philadelphia. A graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, we forgive her, <laughs> and the University of Pennsylvania Law School. She's a sought after commentator on race, civics, politics, urban issues, and poverty. But before we welcome Farah, we have a surprise. Her husband, David Hyman, decided to surprise her and join us today. David, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you, David. More pressure on you, Farah, to perform. Now, please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Farah Jimenez. Thank you for coming, David. You made this job a little tougher, but I appreciate your being here and for signaling your support as so many parents and family members are here doing the same for their graduates. So good morning, graduates and good morning class of 2018, and good morning Penn State Abington. I say good morning to all of you and congratulations because you did it. The long hours, the hard work, the support of your parents, grandparents, siblings, and for some of you, the support of your husbands and your wives and children, well, it all pays off today. You did it. Today we celebrate the fact that you've earned that credential, that diploma, the evidence of the success of your efforts, and we celebrate from this moment that you commence on the next leg of your journey. 
bolstered by all that you've learned here during your time at Penn State Abington. Thank you for giving me the distinct honor of serving as your commencement speaker. It is a privilege to be asked, and it is an invitation I embraced with the flip sides of the same coin, both sheer excitement and sheer terror. I do a lot of public speaking, yes, and I'm accustomed to sharing my ideas. I've been a columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer, a keynote speaker at Philadelphia Magazine's Think Fest, and served as a surrogate for a presidential candidate. I'm not afraid of microphones and cameras, and I seek every opportunity to use my voice to shape the public discourse. But when I received the call from Andy August, Dean Andy August, and the invitation from Chancellor Damien Fernandez to address all of you, I'll be honest, my heart responded quickly with yes before my head could say, absolutely not. It's not one of those things to, it's one thing to talk about politics and policy and poverty, these things I know. And it's quite another to weave together those words that should illuminate your path forward, guide your steps, encourage you as the graduating class of 2018 of Penn State Abington. And what advice might I have? After all, in my mind, I'm very much still a work in progress. So when doubt settled in, I turned to my colleagues at the Philadelphia Education Fund for advice. Now, who would be better equipped, of course, right? These are individuals who work with 1,300 first-generation low-income students every year to get them to and through college. Surely they'd be good counsel. So I asked the three of them, three of them, the same question. What was a highlight of your commencement speaker's address? And it was unanimous. Not one of them could remember the speech and let alone the commencement speaker. So I guess that's something. <laughs> truth, truth is, while I do remember my college commencement speaker, the thing I remember most from that speech was the advice, girls, wear your pearls. I don't think it was a metaphor. I really do think it was just plain fashion advice. <laughs> but there was much more to the speech, of course, because, but it's hard to remember. It was hard to remember when you're wearing your cap and your gown, sitting in the heat, caught in, up in the magnitude of what you've achieved, the celebratory spirit of the day, the warmth and love of all those who believed in you, the sense of victory over those who doubted you, and maybe your own sense of personal triumph, because maybe, just maybe, you were your chief, uh, first doubter in chief. What I can tell you is that the steps that got you here are grounded in all that you need for your journey ahead. Those steps were grounded in courage. I want you to take that in for a minute. The steps that led you here were grounded in courage. And how do I know that? Because Penn State Abington, 50% of you are students of color. 50% of you are first generation college goers. Nearly 30% of you represent low income families and approximately 25% of you are adult learners. By any standard measure, just to get here, the odds were stacked against you. And to graduate, well, today you overcame the odds. Now, how do I also know your courage? From the stories of Lauren, Kim, Wendy, Masuda, Myra, and Viet. I see some of them already here. Six of your classmates whom I met last week and who shared with me their stories of struggle and triumph, long days, early days, and who themselves marveled at their classmates' achievements, balancing personal, family, work, and academic demands while students at the same time, these students exhibited humility in acknowledging all that they had achieved, their own acrobatic feats. How do I know your courage? Because this isn't Oz, and that's not a cowardly lion standing out there. It's the stately, knitly lion, the symbol of your best. You, Penn State Abington, class of 2018, symbolize courage. Growing up, I was lucky to have courageous parents, my parents met at the Baptist, Student the Baptist Student Union at the University of Havana around the time of the Cuban Revolution. And as my father tells it, every day he would be greeted on the grand steps of the university by student militants, troubled by my father's unwillingness to pledge his allegiance to Fidel Castro. Sometimes they'd be taunts, sometimes they'd be threats, but they were always a warning that the day would come when my father would have to choose his faith his convictions, or his life. Fearing for my father, my grandfather pressed my dad to leave Cuba to start a new life overseas with his young wife. A sudden heart attack would take my grandfather and make that request a dying wish. 
and my, my parents tell it, it was not long before they boarded that plane with little more than their faith, the clothes on their backs, my older sister in my mother's belly, and their education. They didn't know what their future would hold, but they had faith, each other, and full possession of the only thing in life that no one could take from them, their education. As you prepare to leave this idyllic campus with its rolling hills, awesome tree canopy, its duck pond, and its nittany lion, I encourage you to leverage your education and that courage you've already demonstrated by getting to and through Penn State Abington. I encourage you to, to do three things. Challenge yourself, take on the challenge of others, and sign up for new challenges. Maya Angelou, the grand dam of poetry and an exemplar of quiet power and strength, ranked courage as the most important of all virtues because, she noted, without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. I first encountered this idea as a little girl. To say I was shy as a child would be a gross understatement. I was lucky because I had a gregarious older sister, and if it weren't for her, I would have had no friends growing up. She made her friends and my friends, and when she wasn't around, I found companionship only in the pages of a book. I remember as a child being a quiet observer of the world, locked inside myself, too afraid to open the door. And I persisted in this way from kindergarten through elementary school and even into middle school. And then I met Roger. Roger and I were middle school classmates, and Roger would tease me nearly every day with what he called the Farrah song. It consisted of a pencil to his lips and silent lip syncing. And every time he did it, he would burst into laughter. Roger was playful in his teasing. He may have even been trying to make me laugh because I think he thought I was actually mute. I was so quiet. The Farrah song didn't sting, but it was a wake-up call to me. I knew even then that if I wanted to achieve all the ambitions I had for my future, I would have to find my voice. That summer, I gave myself the challenge. I made a pact with myself, of course, because I wasn't gonna tell anybody else, I was too shy to do that, that on the first day, of camp, I would introduce myself to every camper before they had the chance to introduce themselves to me. And I have to say that was probably one of the most frightening things I had ever done. I nearly backed out and found an excuse around every corner. But I took that deep breath and tackled that first introduction and learned a vital lesson. Well, really, I learned two vital lessons. First, people are generally quite open. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking was going to happen, but I had envisioned it wouldn't be good. And the other vital lesson I learned was that fear was a prison, and for all these years, I had been both the jailed and the jailer. After that summer, this shy girl, well, she didn't stop being shy, but let's say Roger had to find some new lyrics. So Grand Dame Maya Angelou, you were correct. Once I found the courage to amplify my literal voice, I learned quickly that that same voice could be all the more powerful when championing a cause and taking on the challenges of others. For me, it was on campus that I found this voice and began my lifelong career and commitment to service. Like many high school students, I entered college as a pre-med, but that didn't stick. I like to say that I eventually majored in, ex in extracurricular activities and minored in academics. And it was in the late 1980s, and not unlike today, that there was an ever-increasing number of individuals sleeping on the streets, including on my very campus. I wanted to help, and I started to volunteer with a group called the University City Hospitality Coalition. It was a campus initiative to cook communally meals with families who were struggling with hunger and food insecurity, and homeless individuals. We would serve those meals family style. And if I'm on, honest, I was committed to helping, but frankly, I was afraid of the homeless. So I started out by helping to raise money for the organization. I figured if I could at least get started, I'd learn to overcome my fear. By my junior year, I became UCHC's volunteer executive director, wrote our first grant, and raised enough money to hire our first time full-time uh, full-time paid executive director. And along the way, I came to know those we served. We cooked together, served together, and dined together. The stories of our dinner guests lit the fire in me, 
and I became that student. Now, these administrators know what that means when I say I became that student. I was the one who lobbied the administration to help me organize buses and students to attend the Housing Now March in Washington, D.C. I wrote columns in our student paper encouraging increases in affordable housing and talking about the shame and invisibility of uh, homelessness. I organized our local businesses in an awareness building campaign informing students and patrons around how they could engage in helping address rising rates of homelessness. That experience on my undergraduate, undergraduate campus would touch off a lifelong career in public service. And since those early days, I've, had, I've led nonprofits working to improve blighted communities, supporting women and children experiencing homelessness, and currently I'm at the Philadelphia Education Fund, which is an agency committed to ensuring that students attending Philadelphia's lowest graduation rate high schools have every skill, knowledge, and resource necessary so they can get to college and get through college. Now, I came to the Philadelphia Education Fund while I was at the midway point of my service as a commissioner on the school five-member school reform commission, which until June 30th of this year is the governing body of the school district of Philadelphia. My tenure on the school reform commission began almost um, identically to the lead-up of today. I was invited to meet with Governor Tom Corbett as he had indicated he had some interest in nominating me for this position which I saw and others saw as both an opportunity and a challenge. So when he turned to me and asked me if I would do it, before I could say no, my heart sang and said yes. It is a tough assignment and it was a tough assignment. There were no easy votes. There were, no, there were many angry parents. There were a lot of under-resourced schools in Philadelphia and certainly an abundance of small p and big p politics. Winston Churchill is quoted as saying, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. I signed up for this volunteer job in order to take the tough votes, to stand up and speak for our children. But I would soon learn that even with those with whom I fiercely disagreed, or with those who would interlace their testimony at our school reform commission meetings with anger, ad hominem, personal attacks and vitriol, if I could still myself long enough to let that anger, their anger, wash over me, on occasion I would discover there were areas where we agreed, a starting place for working together to help Philadelphia school children. I learned that exercising the courage to sit and listen could be just as powerful ex as exercising my courage to speak. And in today's heated and divisive political environment, we might all do well to exercise that type of courage. Finally, I encourage you to sign up for new challenges. Courage is, courage is like a muscle. It can either grow stronger or atrophy. And it's all a matter of how much you exercise it. Make a commitment to keep that muscle strong and sign up for new challenges. Find something that scares you and decide you're going to tackle it. Now, I'm not talking about find something that's scary. Scary is bungee jumping, watching a horror film, or eating a live cockroach. What I mean is something that requires sustained effort, something that's more than a thrill, something at which you might either fail or succeed, that in the doing teaches you something about yourself. Take up an instrument, learn improv, volunteer on a disaster relief project, audition for a musical, enlist in the Army Reserve canvas for a political campaign, run for office. Agree to give a commencement speech. Keep a bucket list of adventures. You're not too old and you're not too young. I started jotting down my own bucket list in my early 20s. It's led to a fair number of adventures and some brutal self-honesty, no doubt, I'm sure there are some runners in this audience. I give you a lot of credit. After training and completing the Broad Street Run, for those of you who don't know, the Broad Street Run is a 10-mile race down a Broad Street in Center City, Philadelphia. I realized that that was about as close as I was going to get to my bucket list item of running a 26.5-mile marathon, and I crossed that sucker off my list. But working my way through my bucket list, I decided I wanted to learn how to skate backwards. I signed up for a group figure skating lesson, and clinging onto the boards in my rental skates, I thought, wow, huh, this is really 
really hard and I love it. I love it because I am really terrible at it right now, which means I can only get better. It's been 15 years since that first lesson and I'm a much better skater. I would hope that would be true after 15 years. And I continue to love skating. I recently competed at the US Adult Nationals and yes, that's a thing. More than 600 adult figure skaters from across the country, ranging in ages from 21 to 80 plus, yes, 80 plus, gathered to compete. In the span of four days, I had the best skate of my life and the worst. I came in second and second to last. And I wouldn't have had it any other way because each time I took center ice and wrestled with the butterflies in my stomach and the jelly in my knees, I knew one thing was true. My courage muscle was getting a workout. Class of 2018 graduates, you are a fortunate lot. You already know what it is to struggle and overcome. You are courage. As Atticus Finch in Harper Lee's best-selling novel, To Kill a Mockingbird said, what good are wings without the courage to fly? Class of 2018, you earned your wings today. Now take your hard-earned courage and fly. Wow. So Farah, um, did you bring your skates? <laughs> we were trying to locate that said Roger, but he was not on Facebook, so sorry. But thank you for the inspiration that you brought to us, and thank you for the important work you do every day. And now, with the authority designated to me by the president of the university and the board of trustees, and I warn you, you're going to hear this several times, I will confer on each, of one, each one of the candidates the degree earned as certified by the appropriate college faculty and the university senate. I now call upon Dr. Andrew Gregory August, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, to present the candidates for associate degrees. Will a candidate for the associate degrees please rise? Dr. Fernandez. Dr. Fernandez, I'm pleased to present these worthy and approved candidates for the degree of associate granted by the Pennsylvania State University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the president of the university and the board of trustees, I confer upon you the degree of associate. Congratulations, you may move your tassel. Daniel Hannigan, Associate, Arts, Letters, and Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please rise? Dr. Fernandez, I'm pleased to present these worthy and approved candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts granted by the Pennsylvania State University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President of the University and the Board of Trustees, I confer upon each one of you the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, you may move your tassels. You may now be seated until the marshals invite you to come to the stage to receive your diplomas. No, nope, you're okay, you're good, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel Schulman, English. Nicole Ramanchuk, Sciences, Psychological and Social Sciences. Mary Wynn, English. Shirzad Dabiri, English. 
Delina Bury, English. Star Falana, English. Brianna Hammer, English. Kelsey Purcell, English. Samuel Santiago, English. William Connor, American Studies and History. Haley Kaler, Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Lauren Blair, Psychological and Social Sciences. Diana Sinkovich, Corporate Communication. Nicole Kajura, English. Daniel DeMalto, History. David Munoz Mendoza, Art. David Kaplan, Art. Christine Marsicano, Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Mary Motes, Political Science. Ian McLaughlin, Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Madison Carter, Corporate Communication. Melinda Nightingale, Organizational Leadership. Edward Bay, Corporate Communication. Kimberly Bradley, Psychological and Social Sciences. Christina Renford, Psychological and Social Sciences. Brianna Hockenberry, Psychological and Social Sciences. Jade Henley, Corporate Communication. Serena Zubair, Corporate Communication. Shantae Serdan, Corporate Communication. Katie Steniger, Corporate Communication. Lindsay Hoban, Corporate Communication. Ariana Adrian, Psychology. Andy Vo, Art. Jacqueline Messina, Psychological and Social Sciences. Jacqueline Petrosky, Psychological and Social Sciences. Carolina Duran, Psychological and Social Sciences. Devonda Howard, Organizational Leadership. Brache Lewis, Psychological and Social Sciences. Ruth Brooks, Psychological and Social Sciences. Stephanie Allers, Psychological and Social Sciences. Viet Pham, Corporate Communication. Savannah Pino, Psychological and Social Sciences. David Lasowski, Corporate Communication. Thank you. Kevin George, Criminal Justice. Michelle Campos, Corporate Communication. Anna Neiman, Psychological and Social Sciences. Matthew Catania, Criminal Justice. Deja Alexander, Psychological and Social Sciences. 
Christine Forrest, Psychological and Social Sciences. Maria Nikonichina, Corporate Communication. Desiree Epps, Corporate Communication. Molly Doyle, Psychological and Social Sciences. Nina Primavera, Psychological and Social Sciences. Jespria Malhortra, Psychological and Social Sciences. Allison Steingart, Psychological and Social Sciences. Carly Koenig, Psychological and Social Sciences. Sean Wallace, Corporate Communication. Solomia Podoliak, Psychological and Social Sciences. Marilyn Lesage, Psychological and Social Sciences. Samantha Morero, Corporate Communication. Kyrie Twyman McNeil, Criminal Justice. Thank you. Kathy Wynn, Science. Marissa Kong, History. Shakira Holloman, Integrative Arts. Sierra Holloman, History. Ying Zhang, Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Alyssa Milnes, Psychological and Social Sciences. Mason Wellborn, Psychological and Social Sciences. Max McDermott, Corporate Communication. Lauren McGrody, Psychological and Social Sciences. Maria Burbano, Psychological and Social Sciences. Catherine Carr, Corporate Communication. Victoria Specka, Corporate Communication. Nick Pelbano, Psychological and Social Sciences. Samantha Stevens, Psychological and Social Sciences. Lauren Hoberger, Psychological and Social Sciences. Carly Mannon, Corporate Communication. Brad Dwyer, Corporate Communication. Kelly Hammond, Corporate Communication. Patricia Ryan, Psychology. Woo! Natalie Bucci, Criminal Justice. William Stewart, Corporate Communication. Robert Goodwin, Criminal Justice. Gordon Liu, Corporate Communication. Adriel Lestage, Psychological and Social Sciences. Alexander Kozak, History. George Connor, Letters, Arts, and Sciences. Rebecca Oliveira, Psychological and Social Sciences. At Penn State Abington, we have a long-standing tradition. When the son or daughter of a faculty or staff member graduates, we invite that faculty or staff member to present the diploma on stage. Will Brianna Ziegler please step forward?
Dr. Ron Ziegler, Associate Professor of Educational Psychology at Abington, will present the diploma to his daughter, Brianna Ziegler, <laughs> Film Video College of Communications. Patricia Grow, English. Danielle Fennell, English. Marwa Kowalski, Psychological and Social Sciences. Curtis Hines, History. of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and the candidates for the Master of Education, please rise. <laughs> Dr. Fernandez, I'm pleased to present these worthy and approved candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and the degree of Master of Education granted by the Pennsylvania State University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President of the University and the Board of Trustees, I confer upon the baccalaureate degree candidates the degree of Bachelor of Science, and upon the master's degree candidates the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. You may move your tassels. You may now be seated until the faculty marshals invite you to come to the stage to receive your diplomas. Irene Abdulaziz, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Tori Parker, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Abigail Matheny, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Allison McNally, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Emily Simaluka, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Nina Negron, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Brooke Goldsmith, Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Leanne Stab. Elementary and Early Childhood Education. Ardiola Tosca, Science. Jainaba Dia, Science. Harika Kariampudi, Science. Eliza Phillip. Science. Cindy Garcia, Science. Jennifer McClanahan, Science. Haley Smith, Science. Jocelyn Yurko, Science. Joel Chachapoya, Science. Gabrielle Simmons, Science. Amaya Hawkins, Science. Brianna Spurgeon, Science. Pooja Patel, Science. Arnaldo Adu Darko, Information Sciences and Technology. Matthew England, Business. Megan Wolfinger, Criminal Justice. Lauren Greenlee, Criminal Justice. Kathleen Fernandez, Psychological and Social Sciences. 
Aisha Persico, business. Elise Davis, business. Hannah Chang, psychological and social sciences. Madison Undercuffler, rehabilitation and human services. Andrew Chanofsky, information sciences and technology. Renata Zavilova, Biology. Rabea Akhtar, Information Sciences and Technology. Kushbu Patel, Information Sciences and Technology. Devani Patel, Information Sciences and Technology. Apple Mendoza, Information Sciences and Technology. Catherine Coppola, Information Sciences and Technology. Reynaldo Lina, Information Sciences and Technology. Aldo Zerba, Information Sciences and Technology. Kevin Micus, Information Sciences and Technology. Danny Talang, Information Sciences and Technology. Eugene Matavitsky, Information Sciences and Technology. Alexander Panea, Information Sciences and Technology. Catherine Sharon, Criminal Justice. Annalyn Salabia, Criminal Justice. Mark Franchetti, Criminal Justice. Kaylin Stewart, Criminal Justice. Leslie Jordan, Human Development and Family Studies. Michael Rusis, Accounting. Ryan Torpy, Psychological and Social Sciences. Eliza Neely, Psychological and Social Sciences. Tara Organtini, Psychological and Social Sciences. Amber Dysinger, Psychological and Social Sciences. Victoria Smith, Business. Robert Nutt, Psychological and Social Sciences. Luke Fabry, Business. Jessica Ban, Psychological and Social Sciences. William Donovan, Information Sciences and Technology. Zubi Ula, Information Sciences and Technology. Shavam Patel, Information Sciences and Technology. Ubek Jin, Information Sciences and Technology. Chad Browdy, Information Sciences and Technology. Keith Stafford, Information Sciences and Technology. To continue in the spirit of Penn State Abington's unique tradition, will James Hoff please step forward? Jim Hoff, Digital Marketing Manager at Abington, will present the diploma to his son. James Hoff, Information Science and Technology.
Darren Johnson, Jr., Security and Risk Analysis. Jennifer Lewis, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Woo! William O'Donnell III, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Woo! Shannon Lynott, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Woo! Jillian Kay, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Amanda McMonagle, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Shannon Donahue, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Michelle Latronica, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Sylvia Pereira, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Catherine Fox, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Dominic Allen, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Sharnese Merriweather, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Kadira Harper, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Wylissa Sistrunk, Rehabilitation and Human Services. <laughs> Michelle Vaya, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Dylan Smith, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Ashley Smith, Psychological and Social Sciences. Azimjan Duranov, Criminal Justice. Jesse Torgman, Business. Brittany Keys, Business. Victoria Godina, Business. William Wilkinson, Jr., Business. Daniel Biddle, Criminal Justice. Nicolette Vescuso, Criminal Justice. Myra Dietz, Business. Brittany Fortune, Business. Michaela Mast, Business. Nicole Folta, Business. Matthew White, Accounting. Aaron Lee, Accounting. Bridget Fay, Accounting. Angelina Sertain, Accounting. Erlina Jones, Accounting. Courtney. Courtney Stone, Accounting. Elizabeth Kammermesh, Business. Rebecca Kammermesh, Accounting. Melissa Mecca, Accounting. Michelle Toth, Accounting. Michael Cook, Business. Brendan Tramo, Business. Kyle Haywood, Business. 
Hiri Noka, business. Lasana Golashi, business. And Diola Waziri, business. Rich Messina, business. Danielle Day, business. Asita Fakova, business. Rachel Riemann Schneider, Rehabilitation and Human Services. Taylor Houston, Biology. Sean Sandgren, Biology. Elat Alkurdi, Biology. Bernard Brutus, Biology. Miguel Costa, Biology. Mohamed Istiak, Biology. Rand Albastami, Biology. Irina Korochka, Biology. Danny Ajlani, Biology. Louis Manili, Accounting. Tor Francis, Business. Suraj Pandia, Business. Dhruv Hipara, business. Yeah, bro. Peter Kim, business. <laughs> Stephen Bardos, engineering. Samuel Steiner, information sciences and technology. Kevin Ballister, business. Caitlin Woger, business. Quinn Trong, business. Falan Kane, business. Candace Siegel, business. Manor Rana, science. Virginia Lung, Accounting. Angel Paul, Accounting. Jeffin Raji, Information Science and Technology. Alina Yarmakovich, Business. Maria Lacey, Accounting. Crespin Acapo, Accounting. Kyle Beck, Information Sciences and Technology. Angel Hill, Business. Shane White, business. Brandy Hambrick, business. Amber Terry, criminal justice.
Kayla Morgan, business. Wendy Lang, business. George Klein, Jr., business. Michael Daniels, business. Chantel Moore, business. Carmen Mateo, business. Fogia Mukta, Information Sciences and Technology. Robert D'Annunzio, business. Brittany Hunter, criminal justice. Lesia Fallendish, business. Daniel Pino, business. Candice Yohi, business. Jennifer Rakita, business. Ian Roach, Information Science and Technology. Valerie Mitchell, Business. Jonathan Henry, Accounting. Gypsal Segura, Psychological and Social Sciences. Emily Puchu, Behavioral Health, College of Health and Human Development. Keon Smith, Information Sciences and Technology. Delora Ortiz, Science. Nicholas Swinehart, Criminal Justice. Thomas Vessels, Criminal Justice. Raymond Weiss, Business. Jasmine Zabnowski, Criminal Justice. Mallory Slusher, Criminal Justice. Devin Green, Criminal Justice. Matthew Ball, Business. Shamika Mathis, Business. Tiffany Chen, Accounting. Arnaldo Bennett, business. Masuda Mimi, information sciences and technology. Coral Gonzalez, business. Daniel Keyes, information sciences and technology. Morgan Page, Science and Physical Therapy. Sean McCluskey, Science, Physical Therapy. Christy Jobovich, Nursing. Nicholas Rosolowicz, Nursing. Ashley Mount, Nursing.
Christina Dictier, Science. Janice Shoup, Science. Sayana Kofa, Criminal Justice. Jessica Murtaugh, Science. Aaron Kubak, Nursing. Camille Manson, Nursing. Dana Gandabush, Nursing. Saran Chalk, Nursing. Sarah Copen, Nursing. Courtney Logan, Science. David Belos, Science. Alexander Azips, Science. Mary Trigoba, Science. Michael Glazier, Science. Amber Moore, Nursing. Myra Resto, Nursing. Kelly Robb, Nursing. Margaret Roxley, Nursing. Margaret Logan, Nursing. Tracy Ophie, Nursing. Paige McLeister, Nursing. Heather Kirkwood, Nursing. Leah Yeager, Nursing. Robert Flaherty, Jr., Nursing. Woo! Kellyanne McCarthy, Nursing. Woo! Samir Zolgadar, Nursing. Shanika Walker, Nursing. <laughs> Janae Chicatino, Nursing. With a Master's of Education in Higher Education, Frank Stern. With a Master's of Education in Learning, Design, and Technology, Michael Reese. Those whose names, those whose names appear in the program but were not called to the stage have elected to graduate in absentia. I now call upon Dr. August to introduce those students who are graduating with academic honors. The Pennsylvania State University regards outstanding scholarship as a meritorious achievement that deserves public recognition. Several of our graduates today are included in the honors group. There may be others who will be named to the group as a result of their final semester's work. If so, they will be so designated in an official Penn State Abington program. 
It's now my pleasure to introduce those present who are graduating with honors. Students who are graduating summa cum laude are wearing blue and white cords. Students who are graduating magna cum laude are wearing blue cords. And students who are graduating cum laude are wearing white cords. Please hold your applause until after I've read all the names. Students, please rise as I call each of your names and remain standing. Summa cum laude, Andrew Chudnowski, Catherine Coppola, Harika Karyampudi, Eugene Matavitsky, Rachel Schulman, Rebecca Studer, Magna Cum Laude, Lauren Blair, Angelina Sertain, Brian DiDonato, Carly Koenig, Ian Roach, Samuel Santiago, Nicolette Viscusco, and Cum Laude, Ala Alcordi, Jessica Bon, Miguel Costa, Robert Flaherty, Victoria Godina, Cindy Gomez Garcia, Lauren Greenley, Amaya Hawkins, Wendy Liang, Stacy McIntyre, Amanda McMonagall, Angel Paul, Joseph Flieger, Janine Rajowski, Nicole Romanchek, Allison Steingart, Brianna Ziegler. You have our heartiest congratulations on your scholastic achievements. And you may be seated. Among the outstanding graduates today, I want to recognize those who are earning more than one degree. William Connor graduates with a Bachelor of Arts degree in American Studies and another in History. And Stephen Moylan graduates with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics and a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics. William and Stephen, would you please rise so that we may acknowledge your accomplishments. I'll now introduce the faculty marshals. The faculty marshal role is an esteemed privilege. The role of faculty marshal during commencement is not just to lead our faculty into the ceremony, but to set the tone and decorum for our graduates on the day of commencement. The, the position is symbolic of our faculty's involvement in shaping students' lives. Will Dr. Matthew Fury please rise? Dr. Fury is our graduation marshal. Will the faculty marshals please rise? Our faculty marshals are Dr. Samir Uzamji, Dr. Zafar Hedahat, Dr. Roy Robson, and Dr. Francis Sessa. Please join me in thanking all of our commencement marshals. Will Andrew Chudnovsky please stand? Andrew is our spring 2018 student marshal. The student marshal designation is considered an honor by the university in recognition of academic achievement. Thanks, Andrew. It's now my pleasure to present the Abington Faculty Recognition Award winners. Will each, recognition, uh, will each recipient please stand to be recognized? The Scholar Award for Dr. Megan Gillen, Associate Professor of Psychology. The Outstanding Teaching Award for Tenure Line Faculty, Dr. Marissa Nicosia, Assistant Professor of Renaissance Literature and English. The Outstanding Teaching Award for Instructors and Lecturers, Christine Broughton, Assistant Teaching Professor of Statistics. The Award for Distinguished, Distinguished Faculty Service, Dr. Karen Weeks, Associate Professor of English. Outstanding Faculty Advising and Mentoring Award, Joseph Oakes, Assistant Teaching Professor of Information Science and Technology. And the Special Recognition Award, Hudson Safel, Lecture in Writing and Communications. Please join me in congratulating our faculty award recipients. Will Ala al Kurdi, Lauren Blair, Carly Koenig, Samuel Santiago, and Nicolette Viscuso please come to the stage for the Schreier 
Honors College Medal presentations. Let, let me tell you a little bit, let me tell you a little bit about the significance of the medallion and their senior thesis. This medallion recognizes outstanding accomplishments and is a visible sign of the student's commitment to learning and scholarly pursuits. In it, it is inscribed scholarly achievement, integrity of purpose, and intellectual curiosity. Ala al Kurdi, a biology major, investigated a molecule that has anti cancer and anti proliferation properties in cancer cell lines. She observed the effects of five different novel compounds and found that her results support possible implications of this molecule possessing anti cancer properties and should be further evaluated for possible mechanisms and uses. Thank you, Allah. Lauren, <laughs> Lauren Blair, a psycholo psychological and social sciences major, examined the influence of new media such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on body image dissatisfaction. The term fitspiration describes a trend designed to motivate individuals towards a healthier lifestyle. Her study explored the messages linked to fitspiration imagery on Pinterest and gained a better understanding about thinspiration and fitspiration. <laughs> Carly Koenig, who received her degree today in psychological and social sciences, studied the reliability of eyewitness testimony in our justice system due to the susceptibility of memories to misinformation from outside sources. Her study analyzed the misinformation effect in a virtual reality setting. <laughs> Samuel Santiago, whose degree is in English, wrote the first 100 pages of Nowhere Kind, a story that will eventually develop into a full-length novel or series of novellas. The purpose of his thesis was the construction of a good story, intriguing characters, dramatic events, and a believable, built, fictional world. <laughs> Nicolette Viscuso, who earned a degree in criminal justice, examined the realities of canine policing. The main research questions probed how officers created and maintained the bond with their canines, the canine selection process and training. Findings showed a common link between the officers with how they viewed the leash as the connection between the handler and the canine. Please join me in congratulating our Schreier Honors <laughs> College Medal recipient. Allah, please join me here. Thank you all. You may return to your seats. The role of a valedictorian is reserved. Okay, some people like to hog the limelight. The, the, the role of a valedictorian is reserved for the highest achieving student in the class. Will Rachel Schulman please come forward? <laughs> Rachel, an English major, will speak on behalf of the class of 2018 today.
Good morning, distinguished guests, faculty, and families. First and foremost, congratulations to everyone whose hard work and dedication earned them a degree from Penn State today. Class of 2018, this is the end of our era of undergraduate studies and the continuation of our journey to become the future leaders of our world. It is and will always be individual passions that keep us moving forward. Everyone here is a vital component of the evolution of our society into something of which we can all be proud. Though your achievements being honored today are the gates to your future, let us not forget that we have all been great influences in the world prior to officially acquiring our degrees. We have all been advocates for our passions, agents of change within our own social spheres, and participants in the personal introspection that it takes to come into our own initiatives. As we enter this next phase of our lives, I encourage us all to never become complacent with our successes or feel that we should rest ourselves on recordable achievements. Tangible success is wonderful, but it does not define us. We are all driven, dynamic, ardent, and compelling people, both as scholars and as human beings. But it is the latter that lends us our diversity and true self. For me, books were a place where I found vivid manifestations of real world thought, ideologies explored in the most abstract of ways, and the courage to be my own character. During my time as an English major at Penn State Abington, I read brilliant literature on personal journey, hardship, and triumph, and applied these lessons to my daily life. However, the most daunting theme I encountered throughout my undergraduate career was doubt. Doubt that, if casted aside, would have provided the space necessary to perform my best in life and in academia. As we have come to this day, we have all triumphed over doubt, and that is an admirable feat. We must all be advocates for each other, but most importantly, we must be advocates for ourselves. We must trust in our abilities and in our motivations to achieve whatever we choose to seek out, even when we feel defeated. Take those times of doubt, of worry, and of failure, and look at the formidable people that exist in the aftermath. Be proud of your achievements today, but never stop seeking knowledge and self-discovery. Congratulations again to everyone on this very happy day. Your personal and academic success inspires me and everyone around you. I would now like to introduce the Lionheart Award winner. The lion represents Penn State and the heart symbolizes energy, effort, and integrity. This award recognizes a faculty, staff, or administration member who inspired our class and who exemplifies the ideals of energy, effort, and integrity. A nominator described this person as a support system for each incoming class of students and someone who sees each opportunity as a teaching moment. The 2018 Lionheart Award winner is Associate Professor of Biology, Eric Ingersoll. Thank you, Rachel, and congratulations, uh, Dr. Ingersoll. I now invite Nicole Ramonchek to the podium to present the class gift. Hello, class of 2018, and thank you, Dr. Fernandez. Today, I have the honor of presenting the senior class gift. Through this gift, we will show our pride and appreciation for Penn State Abington. I am proud to announce that our senior class gift this year will be a donation to the Student Emergency Assistance Fund, which supports the Lion's Share Food Pantry, provides support for textbooks, and helps offset unexpected needs. Dr. Fernandez, we are proud and pleased to present this gift to the college on behalf of the class of 2018. Thank you. We are. 
thank you, Nicole, and thank you to all, all who contributed to the class gift. It is my pleasure now to introduce Melissa Quintana, president of the Penn State Abington Alumni Society Board, who will welcome our new graduates into the society. Thank you, Dr. Fernandez. We're right there, we're so close. On behalf of the Penn State Alumni Association and Abington Alumni Society, I am delighted to welcome you into a network of more than 673,000 Penn State alumni who are making a difference in their communities and their professions. As a Penn State Abington graduate, my best advice is to stay connected with Penn State in the years to come. When I graduated, I immediately sought out a local alumni association chapter. I had the opportunity to meet alumni who were Penn State Abington alum, others who graduated with the same major, and those on a similar career path as I. In the same net alumni network, I was able to network with other alumni who were willing to be advisors and mentors and made it their mission to ensure I was on a path towards success. To help you get started in your new alumni journey, I am pleased to present each of you with a one-year free membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. <laughs> your membership connects you with more than 300 alumni interest groups around the world. So are you guys ready? Would our new graduates please rise? <laughs> Would all Penn State alumni and attendants please also rise? It gives me great pleasure to induct all graduates in the Penn State Alumni Association. On behalf of all members, congratulations and welcome to the tribe. Please see. Uh, please be seated. Um, thank you, Melissa. Please join me once again in congratulating our graduates. We invite you to come to the Sutherland Plaza for a reception immediately following the ceremony. The Abington College Spring Commencement will conclude with a Penn State alma mater. The words are the, on the inside front cover of your program. We invite you to rise join in the singing, and remain standing until the, professional, the processional has left the area. Thank you, and enjoy the day. Good job. 